Wonder why every song you hear lately reminds you of an older one? Whether it's the rhythm or the lyrics verbatim, new artists are benefiting heavily off sampling hit songs and we are loving it. Kiddie's 2017 smash hit Odor samples Let It Be Me by the Everly Brothers and Oforian Ponce's Broken Heart. I bless the day I found you. I bless the day I found you. The late Ebony's Poison samples that Lumba's classic of the same name. Hema Amisha samples Kelly's iconic yell from her 2009 hit Caught Out There. Adina's Too Late captures the melody of Mark Anthony's universal ballad, I Need You. I need you. Oh, baby, I need you. But Joey B's Sweetie Pie comes more or less as a remake of Oforian Ponce's Odonium. And as far as samples go, his chocolate special captures the nostalgia of an AIDS campaign song in the early 2000s. Protect yourself, protect yourself, think, protect yourself, protect yourself, protect yourself, think, protect yourself, think, protect yourself, wise up. Rings the bell? But when is it illegal to sample? We join Chief and Plunge in the Matic Studios. Enjoy. Welcome to the Perception Party right here from the Matic Studios. This is the biggest podcast on the land. And we have some big personalities in the house. Uh, we are joined by Liza. Please don't be short while I start up because I literally have a gun over and over my head so I mention the name wrong. Liza is a and artist and repertoire. She is the country manager for Boomplay and also an acquaintance yes i have to say that i know i know top people <laughs> and as usual my my there's a name i call him but i can't say it I, I, I've, I've been told it's very troubling so please tell, tell us who you are again who are you they know who i am wow uh, yeah you have two five seven okay my, my name is Blanche. <laughs> That's it. That's all. Anyway, so so yeah, we are going to look into the issue of sampling, and also we are going to talk about record labels. And uh, before that, I just I just want to know something really important, Slida. What did you eat this morning? Yo. Okay. So, <laughs> so um, took it back again Saturday morning. Watching. Okay, yeah. that's fine. That's fine. I haven't eaten, so I'm not going to put all my energy in this <laughs> anyway. So, a, a little bit about you. Tell us a little you want us to know, you know, before we delve into. The okay, reasons. so um, as you said mm-hmm. earlier, so I'm an A and R uh, access manager as well, and country manager for a uh, streaming service. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm popularly known as Liza, so let's just leave that there. Yeah. I also went to uh, university in Kumasi, that's KMST okay. Tech. Okay. I studied fine arts. Wow. And I have a degree in fine arts. Wow, that's so nice. I majored in painting. Wow. Yeah. That's great. So from there, while I was in school, I actually uh, did a VC course around PR, music theory, and then. Um, music therapy so that's where the interest was actually building up because when i was younger i used to write poems write stories and i started rapping so i used to rap in senior high school and when i went to i didn't think i wanted to be what sort of young. rap were you doing i want to want to want to know is it uh, a day in the, the day in the sun can be so much fun <laughs> <laughs> if you are <laughs> no, no, no. Because like, you a line. 
Like, when we get to the end of the whole thing, I will. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't what was your rap name? Liza. Actually, it was Miss Liza, so MS Liza. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I would have gone for, like, Judy Mucha Tao or something. Because I had a guy style, so. So, yeah, I started rapping in school. Uh, when I, so when I got to uni, most of my friends were like, oh, when there's a show in school, you need to go and perform, you need to let people, but I realized I never wanted to be mm-hmm. that kind of, mm-hmm. I like music, but I didn't want to, to be, be at the forefront of it, I, I don't like cameras, so, sorry. Yeah, I was about to say, this is the first time <laughs> Liza has ever, ever done anything close to an interview or a show on camera, and she did it for the biggest podcast of the night, the Perception Party. <laughs> Yes, you're not outside. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I decided, well, I still like music. That's why I did the whole music theory, music therapy thing to understand more about it. And from there, I just started studying on my own, reading around anything music, music business, and all of that. So, right after school, um, I used to work with Balassi. Oh, cool. And I can, in in different ways, comment about their music, push their music, post it, refer people to their sound and everything. And then later I got into artist management and um, was an artist called Big Ben, okay. who was under a record label called Harmony Records in the UK. But he, he was Nigerian and then he was in Ghana. So, there's a song by him and Manifest, and there's a Manifest song featuring him as well. Um, Do My Own, and a couple of things that I hear and out. And so from there, I think there was an issue with the label and all of that, and then I decided to move. So that's when I started artist management for okay. with Brian Vimento. Okay. So, okay. And then along the way, I got a couple of offers and then I happened to land that something. I really have to do this honorable mention. If you don't know Brian Demenso, you should pick out your phone right now and check him out across our platforms. He's solid, crisp, fresh sound. <laughs> you know. No, he didn't pay me to do this. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, he paid you. It, nah, he, he didn't give me a dime. I just want to put you on good stuff. Thank you. How much? How much? We really had a chance to say he paid you in full. <laughs> <laughs> he had a good chance. Anyway, I, 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 I'm really impressed with background you have there. This goes to show you're the right person we need to answer certain questions that <laughs> we have that keeps bugging us. Me in particular, I'm just, I'm just wondering, you know, there, there, there are so many questions. I mean, the intro says it all. You know, sampling has become, like, should I say, a necessary evil? Right now, if you don't if you don't sample, who who wants to hear your song? You, you understand, and I think you know. In a way, I don't know if it's, if, if it's helping or depleting creativity. Mm-hmm. What is your stance on that? Hmm. So I think basically, I think it depends on. First what, off, okay. When can we see an artist has sampled a song? Before you come back to okay. whether sampling is depleting okay. So when he uses um, any part of anybody's work, okay. like it could be it could be just the sound, the drums, or a particular melody, mm-hmm. or it could be the lyrics mm-hmm. and how it's arranged mm-hmm. in his song. Okay. If it was used in somebody else's original okay. song, okay. then that's something. Okay. So, for instance, an artist says, Abba Frambo, one watch it, she You know, our, our local artists, they, I don't know if they are linguists, but they write a lot of proverbs. Mm-hmm. And proverbs are like universal mm-hmm. or very generic. You know, if someone says, Abba Frambo, one watch it, she someone says it in another song, how they sample it. And what's in what way? Then we're down and ask you. Do how the person is so the caters to his part. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So because because we need to set the parameters right mm-hmm. on what sampling is, mm-hmm. so that people who make you all gatekeepers of sampling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any song that reminds you of anything, then you, you really know that okay, this is it. Mm-hmm. So, with that established, ha, has has the art of sampling mm-hmm. depleted creativity so far? Um. I don't I don't think it has. I feel like it's been abused though. Like everybody wants to sample something and 
it depends on how you used it or how well your writing was. So that's I always look at writing. People are like, I'm so concerned about lyrics mm-hmm. more than yeah. if I can dance to the music. Yeah. So there's a song by a guy called Che Nyum, mm-hmm. and then he sampled Amachi Dede's um, Odor Dami. I don't know. I don't know if that's the title, mm-hmm. but the song is Odor Dami. Like, like, yeah. yeah. So he he when I was listening to his song. He had written like proper verses mm-hmm. and that was the chorus like mm-hmm. he had actually yeah he had actually mm-hmm. it was well written mm-hmm. and i absolutely love the song even more mm-hmm. so it he was so creative with it he had sampled but he was so very creative okay. the other song that it, it's just lazy for example I'm going to be very politically correct, so I'm not going to mention, <laughs> I'm not going to mention uh-huh. anybody's uh-huh. Like, I mean, word, you know, but you know, you know. But do, yeah, do, okay, yeah. do, 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 do a melody. No. Can you do another song? <laughs> well, like, if you know, you know. I mean, and I know you know. <laughs> Why are you concluding? Yeah. You know? <laughs> there are other songs that you, you listen to and there's nothing new to it. Mm-hmm. Maybe the person just, just added baby. Okay, okay. Lovely. <laughs> Maybe just yeah. like some three lines, and then yeah. the whole song is somebody yes. else's song. Yeah, so I'm thinking the, this sort of music, this this art of making mm-hmm. music, this obviously um, easier art of making music, mm-hmm. has it? You know, I feel it's it's taken away the 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 the, the core creative side of of, mm-hmm. of the of, of music making. So to speak, like literally, as you said, as you say, people just cut and paste. Mm-hmm. The melody is there, has to recall value. It reminds me nostalgia, yeah. you know. Not to even write any Ghanaian artist or DJ Khaled that is perfectly mm-hmm. just picked Carlos and Tynes, Maria Maria mm-hmm. and the wild 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 thoughts, mm-hmm. you know. But I guess they he paid the the right he went mm-hmm. through the right channel. Mm-hmm. So we that's a discussion for the for, for another time. But do you think I'm looking at the core values like of music making? Mm-hmm. That's writing, having a person come and play, you know, mm-hmm. a solo, you know, chord progression, bass line. Don't you think it's taking away? Like you just literally left in an old work and doing it. That's just taking away. But do you realize they also they also wrote like a whole different lyrics to it. So now it's just writing. It's not 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 just no, not just writing, but they they were also creative with their with their writing do you get so it wasn't exactly what the old song was talking about this was a different type of song but i i feel like everybody has a different reaction yeah, to i feel it's not completely depleting creativity or, yeah it's like you it from time <laughs> sampling and always as always as a part of music. music but the problem comes in how you use it mm. and how you do it some of them are creative with it and some of them are just it's break down to copy and paste. Mm-hmm. So with that one, when they made a copy and paste one, that is where you can see maybe this artist was just being lazy. And 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 also, can we? I think maybe we we should look at the the parts of the song that they sample. It's usually the melody. It's usually the melody. It's usually that catchy part of it. Mm-hmm. But for artists like, let's say, I I know of a a sample from Drake, uh, Western Road Flows, where. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he has some very, very, very deep lines song there. You know, you, you can hear that Mary singing in the back. Okay, you don't literally. If you listen to the original song, you don't, you don't, you know, you see that work has been done on Drake's mm-hmm. version. You know, yeah. that's what I'm talking about. But people pick the thing and the melody is just there. <laughs> yeah, they say they yeah, you know, know, it's just, just their voice. voice. So there's, voice. there's a different case of. I want yeah. to narrow it down to the Ghanaian yeah. artist. There's a different <laughs> case of. Because of mm-hmm. every friend who ran around our craft, and uh, in as much as we sample, we are, are we sampling the right way? And is there a right way to sample? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you tell us that's the question. <laughs> there's, there's a right way to sample, okay? There's a right way you can sing the person's melody or whatever, mm-hmm. you can also pick the person, the actual. Mm-hmm. Voice, voice or the actual beat mm-hmm. and put it in your yeah, feature your, your, exactly like the way you're talking yeah, about yeah. Drake and Mary yeah. and then there's um I think Burner Boys 
tape. He had a sample in there where the somebody's voice in it as well. So he didn't he didn't necessarily have to read your person who was so crazy. He just needed to pick and put it in his. Does it come out of you? Yeah, it depends on who you are dealing with or which label owns it or who owns the rights. There is for them for sometimes there are sometimes when. One person doesn't own it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe the actors and record label they are publishers. So that means your portfolio process is very rich, right? Because I mean, you would hope. <laughs> I would hope. <laughs> so 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 visa that you hope. Yeah, I hope portfolio is, is rich very because it's literally like the most uh, good right now. Say from twenty fifteen <laughs> or fourteen yeah. to now. He's been sampled a lot. Yeah. yeah so right. should be very rich. Yeah. Right. But I I, I I don't know if he's rich or not. I don't know the kind of agreement he he That's goes into with these artists yeah. that sample him. Mm-hmm. I don't even think Ghanaian artists go or, through any process yeah. to sample. I feel like most of our artists just enter the studio. Oh, just like that, free of charge. Or maybe they the get thing. a song. They hear a song. They're like, oh, the song. Oh, let me see property. if I can. I can. Do you something it around do. it, yeah. and, and like the, like, the first song I gave an example yeah. on, I don't know, but the song was really nice. But when the guy ended, he just like gave a shout out <laughs> to the Amachi. I literally said that. So too. I don't know if that counts or if he actually went to see him mm-hmm. or if he's related to him in any way. Maybe you know, maybe he's like, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. Like, and then they have a mean you too. Maybe to add also to add to that, I feel like the clearances come in when you are trying to sell it, mm-hmm. but I feel like you can use it when it's just for a mistake. No, like yes, previously, we had mistakes, mistakes which I don't think we do have them anymore right now, but previously, mistakes were just free music, you're just trying. Mm-hmm. Your hands on something like that, but even with that one, the artist reserve the original artist reserves the right to right. mm-hmm. give you permission or just to cut. So, I feel like you can use it if you have, you don't intend to sell to sell it. Okay, but here's the case where everybody is selling, everybody is playing and, shows and with the back of the song. That's, that's the problem. So, uh, so why true. is he not a receiving the Korean process? Yeah, they are, they, are, they are literally so it is the father to all of these all things. Well, we don't, we don't know if he's receiving or if he's not receiving. But, 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 but some time that he was, he had, a, he had an issue with Joey B on the toilet by the song. Okay, but what exactly would have done the magic for him? Or, you know, because I'm sure wherever whoever is in, in the West, has done something, you know, where, you know, if you pick a line of, if you pick human nature right now, I'm sure whoever is in charge of his masters will give you a call in two seconds. And I know of a show in Ghana, right, mm-hmm. that used James Brown's uh, sample, sample in their theme song. Mm-hmm. And James Brown was making money off the show. Literally all the money from the show, the monetized uh, you know, views were going to him. How did that happen? Even so, though James Brown is dead, dead, dead and born. Yeah. yeah. So it is the business where I feel like that has been the problem with our artists and our industry mm-hmm. for a long time. Mm-hmm. And we are not addressing it. Mm-hmm. It's the business. Because if Ophelian person has a good publishing or has a own own, which I believe he owns his masters, I don't know, don't put me on that. But <laughs> I feel like if his publishing is good, cool, you should be eating very well, right? Yeah. Now. Mm-hmm. So, so that's the thing. Like that brings us to music business. I feel like people think music business is just when I record a song and then I upload it on music stores music story. and then people stream and I make money yeah, off it. But to play. exactly, yeah. but it doesn't end there. There's actually more to it than just royalties from streaming. Okay, you could get. There's, there's a couple of rights, a lot of them, there's synchronization, there's a whole lot of synchronization, like, you know when you're playing FIFA, mm-hmm. and there are songs in FIFA, mm-hmm. there are a whole lot of songs in yeah. FIFA, you're selecting players and then songs are playing, mm-hmm. people are getting paid, mm-hmm. yes, so they own the rights, you're using their music mm-hmm. in your video game, mm-hmm. and they deserve to be paid, okay. but there's a process, you don't just, if 
I start playing a song on the show for now. Yeah. Like a Ghanaian artist show. A Ghanaian artist music. Mm-hmm. And we play the song. He's not going to get anything because he's not even registered on publish publishing yes. sites. So I mean when people sample people's music, I was reading um, recently I took a course in mm-hmm. music business foundation and then I was reading a couple of things and writing and all of that and then there was a lawyer who was a lecturer and he was like, People can use your song and you can go to court. They'll ask you a couple of things. Mm-hmm. What shows that this thing belongs to you? Is it registered under any even even with your name and everything? Where is your your name? maps? <laughs> <laughs> so where um can we see if you registered it under certain things Whoa. before we can proceed? Whoa. So if you do not have those things, sometimes you don't leave the wow, you don't leave the case. So there was an issue where somebody was like somebody had a song but hadn't dropped it, and then someone dropped a song, some of the same as the person who hasn't dropped it. So he took it to court and they're like, did you register it? Mm-hmm. Wow. Or how do you know that this person stole this from you? They have, there has to be like a very significant connection mm-hmm. to the fact that he heard your song and decided to yeah. create it. Yeah. You know, so now yeah. he had to go and then find Proof yeah. to come and show the court, wow. even though he knows definitely that this wow. was my song. Wow. Now you need to prove to the wow. court or the lawyer that this is that. So I know when people sample songs, and I know people are like, you can take it to court. And hey, what did you register it mm-hmm. as? What shows mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. you own the right to this? Even though we are seeing you singing, and people sing songs, but they don't own the right yeah. to it. Yeah. So yeah. there are labels and whatever behind it that own rights to this thing. Yeah. And recently, I watched um, a documentary on Netflix where Mbobe, mm-hmm. I don't know, Gigi Judah Mbobe, that 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 song, that in the jungle, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to. It was it was it was like the, the, the story song. is it's just it. it's just yeah. sad. Yeah. That man didn't get it. That man did no. He was making like that he was this, a this you know. Was it. Uh, but it's kind they of copyright. No, I think they re- resolved the issue. The resol- yeah, they resolved the issue, but it was only because of of a precedent, a judicial precedent, mm-hmm. where you can't own a set of persons, masters, or an agreement can't stand after a Seven period of years. forty years or so. And I think they it had passed, so that's the loophole. Mm-hmm. You know, they exploited mm-hmm. and okay. they got. You know, some money for the family, but as to what they done with the money, teach, we don't know. But Lion can have been released, so I'm, I'm sure they, they, are, they are working to the bank. But in Ghana, let's talk about this. In Ghana, there, there's obviously not many of these things, or none mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. None at all. Do we even have the courts, like equipped courts, to deal with we don't, issues? First like of all, I'll say that I haven't even seen an entertainment lawyer. Exactly. Oh, wait, I've seen one. I've seen one only because I'm probably in the field, yeah. and one is not even enough. enough and even the one I think was mostly like when the artist has a contract with mm-hmm. some brand or mm-hmm. something like that, but not necessarily some artist, yeah. some lawyer yeah. who's looking at yeah. yo, you put this person's song out. Why is this so? Is it? Is it? Do we take our creativity for granted? Like why? why I, is this I so? think we didn't. Think, we imagine, limited our yeah, we limited we our thinking to lack of drop, drop the song and a lot we of, are popular and that's it. Yeah, a lot of them don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because it's sad. It's sad because you know people. It's it's, it's a whole creative film. Mm-hmm. It's it's intellectual property. It's it's serious, you know. And people are just looking at it like, okay, maybe, maybe, maybe it sort of feels like. It. You know, if you give a shout out, as she said, if you give a shout out to somebody, then that's it. You know, in the yeah, past, giving credit. In the past, <laughs> and imagine if you were saying, and say, Auntie Connie, I will be my friend. That's it, really. And you know, that's sort of it. But it goes beyond that. You know, if I just give somebody a shout out and say, you know, that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. That's it. But obviously, obviously, we, uh, there's something I have to announce in your presence, you know. Okay. We, are, we, are, we are coming up with a music workshop, a music okay. business workshop. Liza has agreed to be on. 
Yeah, just just to hold yeah. you to it <laughs> now. <laughs> and 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 Plaid will be there. We will, we will, we will, we will, we will obviously partner with other um, stalwarts of of the music business industry, you know, and put these things in place and educate people because education is really important to us. Yeah, and it it may interest you to know that we are all. The other fine arts students. Mm-hmm. I wanted to say that oh, the, the arts are frowned upon in Ghana. Yeah, yeah. For yeah. sure. So when when I become president, I'll definitely say in your face. Let's <laughs> <laughs> yes. still watching the perception party. Uh, I like to pause for a break, just a, 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 a break, and when we come back, we will discuss record labels. Stay with us. Hi everybody, this is Chief, and I want to indulge you in this super exciting platform that I've created, the Pave Network on YouTube where you can get high-level Ghanaian creative content with the Perception Party, 50 Questions on TPN and so many other content that we'll bring up later. Kindly, kindly support us and indulge us. Thank you. Welcome to the Perception Party again. We are right here in the Matic Studios. Uh, let me let you in on something big. 50 Questions on the Paid Network. Yes, right on this network, you get to be the interviewer. You're going to ask questions to your favorite personalities you know and um they get to answer them in 10 minutes 50 questions in 10 minutes so just leave a name on the hashtag 50 questions on tpn across social media and we'll bring the personality right here to answer your questions for you okay so if you just joined us you haven't missed much you can just rewind this is not live tv you can just <laughs> rewind and watch but we've been speaking to liza and she's here now and also artist manager. So this gives me the right person to ask about the state of record labels in Ghana. The oldest I know would probably, well not the oldest, but the, the one with the catchiest name is Adjiko. <laughs> and I don't even know if they were distributors or, you know, there are so many what of them. Hammer, well, yeah, the last two, the last two, the last the last two, two I think, I don't know, there's the whole Hasha Studios last two thing. That's the confusion we are in right now. Okay, so we just want to know what the state of record labels are in Ghana. Okay, so um, I personally don't know what the state is in Ghana <laughs> because, just like you mentioned, Aji Code, Hash Hash Studios, I don't think it was even documented for any of us to grow up and read about and you know for certain that this is a label and this is the kind of things that they do. Or they, yeah. Yes, or they did, yeah. So, I mean, growing up, I think the only one that I knew about, Links, even that I didn't know if it was a label or not, yeah. but they seem to have grown into a label. That is, yeah. if they were not yeah. before, because they've had like <coughs> big musicians come out mm-hmm. of there, like a couple of them. A lot, actually, Asem, OG Black, Ziggy. Yeah. Um, Miss V and Easy Richie himself and currently they have Dope Nation oh, yeah. as well as uh Kitty and Connie which is who mm-hmm. happen to be the the people on top now. Okay. So I don't know what their structure is or the kind of deal that they have with these artists mm-hmm. but they seem to be doing something for their artists to be all over the place touring. And then their music all of that as well. There have been other labels, there have been success music and then black and Avenue music. Black Avenue. Which is where is the I don't yeah. know why I'm laughing, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's black. I mean there was well, a certain there's, there's, time there's Joe been, B was on the uh, Okay, yeah, there's Joe, there's Joe B on there. And D Money. D Money. And I don't think they kept long. I yeah. don't even know because labels usually go for maybe two or more years mm-hmm. contracts mm-hmm. i don't think they even spent that mm-hmm. well if they did we didn't know mm-hmm. till maybe they did you or something mm-hmm. and um black avenue currently i don't know if the artists are still even signed or they're still yeah because i don't know what's going on uh, originally the experience i mean recently there was this big move uh away i think it was more about gift <laughs> I mean, forgive me, but we just have to make um, light of these issues. But 
there was an exodus at Bang, and uh, we had a, a whole like a, a whole array of issues. Like you know, I don't really know what really went on there. We probably have to put um, the guy who made uh, uh, Kempinski on mm -hmm. the phone. Mm -hmm. Yes, we have okay. to put him on to that. But that's the, definitely the state of Black Hill Avenue. I think the Black wants to go with Sefa now. Oh, okay. Okay. But I want to know. We do hear news of uh, you know, artists being signed to labels mm -hmm. here and there. Some just sign papers because their mentors gave it to them. You know, some just sign it out of desperation because Charlie Mabre, Charlie Mabre yeah. so the streets in this side of town. But we also do hear on the other side of town, some sign and they, you know, they are giving it $3 million. So less. You know, some are, some, some sign and they, they, they do get like, Proper mm. support, yeah. just like A and R, yeah. and you know, a road manager, and all of oh, these yeah. things that comes with. Why don't we see that here? I mean, I know why, but I want to know. <laughs> how do you know from a musical point or from okay. a business angle, okay. from an artist manager, from okay. your your part of that? In your opinion, why don't we see that here? Okay, so first of, I'm just going to say that we don't even have like the whole music scene in Ghana is in shambles so if there's a particular thing not working the next thing will not work everything. properly like but I feel like we are rushing to do things that there's a process you need to go mm -hmm. through all this process before we get here mm -hmm. but no we just want to get to yeah. this level artists are not reading label heads get some Small money, they decide oh, because I like music. Let me just start something, and they no like they, they like exactly, mm -hmm. and they like the, the title mm -hmm. maybe artist manager or label owner. Label, owner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> label <laughs> owner, they themselves do not understand the business, the business and then the structure mm -hmm. the label should go through. Mm -hmm. There are different ty types of deals, mm -hmm. there are distribution deals, even big labels, one universal. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they, when they say they have signed. A certain artists, the deal is different. Some people sign 360 deals, mm -hmm. some people just do distribution deals, some just do marketing deals, and stuff like that. So, with marketing, people will just I'll do the song, I don't have money to promote or market it. You have all the resources, <coughs> sorry, you have the links. I'll bring the song to you, you do all of that, you have your percentage. And then I get my percentage. Mm -hmm. But mind you, anybody who puts money into something awesome. will recoup their money, In their initial money, mm -hmm. and then pocket. exactly. Yeah. So I think all the deals are like that. Yeah. But it depends on if you do a 360 deal, mm -hmm. they are going to do marketing. They are going to dress you. Exactly. They are going to pay your transportation. Yep. They are going to get you your features. They are going to pay for your video shoots. Your Recording. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. Yeah. Okay for the yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I'm taking you on tour, you said you signed me. Yeah. If I'm yeah. hungry yeah. and I, I have my food, so I won't eat. I'll yeah, wait for you to get a tour. Like <laughs> yeah, you get all of those things. So, but mind you, you are living that kind of life. You think it's it's so cool and everything, but they are going to take back all the money. They spend on you, and you're going to take back their profits, and then you get your percentage. But any which way, they are all written down. You just need to read what is there. Okay. Do you understand? Okay. So if, 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 if when you were making your uh, submission, or when you're answering my question, <laughs> now I sound like a winner. <laughs> when you're answering my question, you said. Um, you know, over here in Ghana. I mean, you and Plant are practically on the same page. Mm -hmm. It's just about titles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. One to something like <laughs> you know, one to this, <laughs> one to <laughs> that. And it's clear yeah, that nice obviously nation. Nation. <laughs> it's clear that obviously the the things don't go the the understanding isn't as 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 clear as mm -hmm. as you put it out. Three sixty years ago. But in your in your I mean, we have mentioned that links is the closest to anything, mm -hmm. quote unquote, um, organized mm -hmm. when it comes to record labels in here, in, in, in Ghana. But do you think it's, it's, it's an issue of 
me being happy to start or that that I mean you mentioned that artists don't read. Okay. Barely. Good. So you think it's really that if you're really happy to start all the education not being there. Because if everybody is enlightened on these deals, then it means there probably wouldn't be anybody signing anybody. Because they're from because <laughs> I'm looking at I'm looking at how many people are on streaming platforms here? You about mm-hmm. how many people how many people go to shows? How many people don't download from mm-hmm. something something mm-hmm. dot com? Okay. So the ecosystem. I'm I'm feeling the ecosystem. I'm asking that the ecosystem supports. It does. Mm-hmm. So then where was the way forward for Web Comic Boys? Well, now you have to start assuming. But look the thing. Once a structure starts working. I'm trying to, I was, I was looking for, we we're discussing something in the office and then somebody put his song on our platform and then he came to start asking, Charlie, how much are you make? <laughs> and then this same person has sent me a free download link. <laughs> so I usually tweet, don't send me free download links. He broadcasted it. You're supposed to broadcast the links that yes. people will pay for. Yeah. But here you are now sharing your music for free and you're expecting me to make you money. How? I can't make you money, but you get. So from that conversation, I decided to type my artist's music on online mm-hmm. and search for any of his music, if it, it had a lead. Mm-hmm. And then I just found one mm-hmm. out of all the songs that he has dropped. So I found one and I just took a screenshot of it. I was like, you know what? Yeah, I'll give it time. When my artist blows, I can see you. <laughs> okay. And then I will put a price to how many downloads is there. I actually showed it to a lawyer, a Nigerian lawyer. I showed it to him. So, but I feel like most of these artists, even drop the song, they put it on yeah. free yeah. downloads. Yeah. Like their labels don't do anything yeah. because in their mind, they come on Twitter and rant mm-hmm. that um, you should support us. Don't download them. You have seen it. You need to take an action. But by, by, by my action, you know. It's, it's it's really about the popular song at the end of the day. Mm. It's about the song, the accessible song at the end of the day. And here's the issue where the case where we don't have people on streaming sites a lot. Mm-hmm. But if you stop putting your music on those platforms, you, you force, them, you force yeah. people to now go on. Because how much is uh, my rival company? It's but, like but, 50 but, but, but how many? How many? People, what's the internet penetration? What's the smartphone penetration? Once, you, once you, a couple once of, you oh, we are looking at the data, but, right? but no. you know, aside that, the internet thing that you're talking about right now, they still use internet to do the free downloads. Yeah, but I was about to say, I think this would have been a or was a problem two years, three years ago, but right now, it is not so much a problem. It because is because right now everybody has the internet. That's exactly, and a smartphone. Still, Smartphones, and now, all the streaming services. We so. have, even right now, we watch movies on Netflix. Ah, rich person, no. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, but um, so right now it's about you directing the people to directing the traffic. Yeah. In Ghana, we still use radio, mm-hmm. so you can give the DJs or whatever mm-hmm. the music for them to play. Once the people like you, then they know where to find mm-hmm. the streaming yeah. services. Mm-hmm. Okay. So for all you uh, people watching that don't know the way, that's why we are here to do it. Yeah, as cheap as 10 CDs. You can find music on book play. So 10 CDs are Yeah. 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 Thank you. you. No, no, no. It's only a new voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, yes. Uh, I mean, that's so, yeah, it basically it's starts just, from there. It's mm-hmm. not just music. From movies, movies everything, everything is streaming now. Yeah, yeah. Movie yeah. videos as well. Because we are oh okay. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, 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 so like uh, it's changed. Mm-hmm. Everything has changed. Because we are decluttering our spaces and all that. You are you are taking away the the tools the kids can play with, you know. But I won't talk. Oh, no, they they play with cassettes. You play with cassettes. <laughs> but anyway when was the last time you saw a cassette? Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so slider is here. Can you take us to the organogram? I don't know if that's, uh, uh, that's not the word to use, but I sound like a grandfather now. Mm-hmm. And then everyone, of course. But can you take us to the organogram of a record label, a typical record label, mm-hmm. if, if you can, you know, from the head to the bottom? Okay. To so the wings. Maybe somebody is learning, somebody wants to start one. 
Okay. So that they understand. Okay. But anyway, we are still advertising our master class. It will be put right here on the paper like as soon as the promo is ready, then you can attend. But for now, she will just give us a, a, a scope of what a typical recommendation is. Okay, so typically, a label, a record label, will invest in music. And mind you, please everybody keep this in mind. They will make their money back. They need to make their money back. So they're going to give you a contract that will benefit them and should benefit you as well. You should definitely I think they'll make sure they will make sure they exactly and you have to, to make sure that, that you are also benefiting. benefiting. So you need to read. First off, um it depends on the kind of artist they think you are. So an A and R from the label, every label needs to have an A and R. They go out to scout for talents. So they can usually they are like, okay, they find the next the next big thing or the next type of sound that would be big. So they are the taste makers. Exactly. So they find the talent and depending on some use your social media following, mm -hmm. your YouTube numbers, mm -hmm. your fan base mm -hmm. to also give you a certain amount of money or to put into your craft a certain okay. amount of money. So all those things count. So now they sign you, they bring you in mm -hmm. and then depending on the kind of songs that you do, mm -hmm. they give you an amount of money. Mm -hmm. Usually people think it's like physical cash, okay. but most often than not, it's That's not. Right. It's, um, money put down for production mm -hmm. money so put down exactly okay. so for your studio time oh. for your so you can change well, it. <laughs> <laughs> for your welfare or well-being mm -hmm. for your looks mm -hmm. for your videos mm -hmm. for your features as well okay. and also um for shows mm -hmm. and i know we, we barely do this here, but for merchandise, okay. Okay. Yeah. so now when they give, when they put this budget down, some of them will now own the music. Okay. There are, there are labels that would say, yeah. we own the masters, the masters to the sound. Yes, yes, because we paid for it. Okay. So you own a certain right to the it. Right, right. I'm not to catch you, but what is a master for somebody who does it? Um, basically, the, the 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 products or the things that went into making of the of the song. Mm -hmm. So you can actually own the lyrics, mm -hmm. but they own the sound, mm -hmm. like the beats. If they pay for it, you can actually. So it depends on what they want to own or what you want to let them <coughs> have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there are some people who you might be the your performer if you are not the one that wrote the, so, the song. Yeah, so. You might own rights to it. you might have performing rights. Mm -hmm. Somebody <laughs> might have like songwriters, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then production. Like there's a whole yeah, lot. The masters is the good now. <laughs> like, well, the masters is the original. So if I yeah, yeah, like if I if I paid for everything, I paid the songwriter. I'm paying the producer. Yes. Yeah, so okay. So when you're signing a contract, you need to read all. These things that like you have to be, it has it's very detailed and it's long, okay. So, so you probably have to get a lawyer, exactly. Definitely, you need to get a lawyer. Wow, to so at that at that time that you you are, you are, you are struggling to eat, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the thing, that's when they get yeah. a lot of people. Wow. I remember Taylor Swift was complaining that yeah. they own her masters, yeah. they invested almost everything into you, mm -hmm. so no matter what you do, wow. they, won't, they won't let you. And once you drop a new song. People go back to your old songs. Mm -hmm. The money goes back to the person who mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So after all these things, they will they will line up the kind of things and percentages that they want to have. Mm -hmm. And then we come back to performing. Like if you perform, they still have a percentage mm -hmm. of it. If you become more popular and then there's merchandise so like t shirts mm -hmm. with your names, caps mm -hmm. with your names, mm -hmm. they have a percentage <laughs> in there. If a brand comes to you and says, Oh, we like this person, so um this watch we want to make you an ambassador, we're cutting you this check, it goes to your label, your label page. So it goes on and on. There are different views. There are views where 
I'm done with my song. Can you just distribute and market it? We can strike a deal and say, okay, um, if you perform, because once I'm marketing it, I'm popularizing your song. Yeah. So if you perform, I need a cut yeah. of it. Yeah. And then if I distribute and people stream it, I'm going to get a cut of it as well. But if you do, some of them, if you do your merchandise, you keep your own thing. If a brand comes to you, you keep your own thing. So there are different types of things. But I feel like people are, labels know that artists are desperate. Even artists know that they are desperate yeah, because, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody wants to be big mm -hmm. and everybody wants to go and all of that. So when artists hear, oh, we'll give you a million dollars. Cash, everything. Like, yeah, so they, they don't even read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you you need to read. That's the most important thing. If you can't read, just get a lawyer who will at least <laughs> be sincere with you. And then. Okay, okay, that's great. So, Liza has taken us to how for so Do you think do we have or do we do artist development here? Do you be well, artist manager? Will they even, will even show up? <laughs> <laughs> I think they they have what an idea of what artists. Yeah, I mean, they are they are egos. Misinformed yeah, and, yeah. and they have an idea of what their 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 end product should be. They, they feel like, well, this is this is how I have to turn out or be, and I am mm. in charge of it. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. they don't understand. Majority of them don't understand. I said, this and somebody has specialty in this, in seeing things this way. So when you're in Ghana, I, don't, I mean, now I'm, I'm talking like like that. <laughs> <laughs> don't play, you know what to do. <laughs> All right, but we have been speaking to the very, 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 That's a lot very, of very, very, before you go. Is that, you don't want me to set it free? No. <laughs> yeah. I have, to have some questions. Okay. <laughs> Time is between us. You see deals, a lot of times when we hear about record deals, mm -hmm. and we'll use the Western world mm -hmm. in Ghana. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we hear about deals over there, it is mm -hmm. about, okay, you said you are going to produce 10 albums for mm -hmm. us, yes. 6 albums for us. Mm -hmm. Over here in Ghana, we have record deals and say, well, I've signed you for two years, mm -hmm. I've signed you for three years. That is it's different and I want to understand, is there a particular way to sign a person or do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, why is it, why is it in, in albums, albums or in years? I don't, honestly, I don't know. I don't think, I feel like there are some that will probably state that. Or is it because maybe albums after three more, after yeah. three albums, no, you can actually say after maybe sixteen songs or twenty seven songs, mm -hmm. you can leave mm -hmm. or when the contract is over, you can renew mm -hmm. or you can leave. Okay. But I don't know that I actually haven't seen a Ghana record label do before. I came close to one. There was an there was a woman who wanted to sign Vine, but she never broke the, the contract, mm -hmm. and it was just by word of mouth mm. and I was like oh, I can do this for you I can do this for you mm. and again artist Brian I'm sorry but he was so excited <laughs> <laughs> and then you come and I am like I'm just blown like okay does she have a contract we need to see something yeah exactly. but because we are not working based on feelings and what you yeah. do for us yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I keep saying this a lot of these companies <laughs> They take advantage of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he, she's like, oh, I like your song. You're very good. Like every artist wants mm -hmm. to hear that. Mm -hmm. I can do this for you. And it's because she's a big woman, small. Like mm -hmm. artists are like, yo, she says she shoot this video. Yes, like I, I don't care. But yeah, personally, I wouldn't want to spend money and not make money back. Yeah. And she's older and richer. Yeah. She definitely wants something back. So we need yeah. to know exactly what she wants. So she needs to give us a contract. Yeah. And yeah. We didn't get a contract, so that was it. Okay, so we have been talking to the very, very, very musically educated Liza. She, she's not just musically educated, actually, but she, she has given us insights on the state of record labels in Ghana and also the right way to sample or whatever you have to do to stop sampling. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and she is the country manager for Boom Play. New players is a streaming app, you should check them out. Also, the artist manager for Brian the Mensa, a person you should really Google if you seem to take a break from all this organized noise that you hear around. So, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And 
Thank you to everybody who has helped with the production. Thank you to Yami Adebardo Kumi Holds Us Down. Thank you to Graphic Show Biz. Thank you to Matic Studios. Thank you to my main man, the Omari. He puts everything together. Thank you to Nakotech for giving us equipment. Thank you to Amara, the Northern Genius. He he came all the way to support us today. Thank you to Edward. He's in his seat feeling comfortable. <laughs> you know. And thank you to everybody. I mean, of course, my faith comes in here. Thank you to God for holding us down. See you same time when we come back from wherever you're going. <laughs> it has been the perception party. Oh, wow.